Okay, I want to talk today about titration, which is a chemical technique used in laboratories to find the concentration of an unknown solution by using a solution with a known concentration. And so it's kind of a cool balancing technique that utilizes things like dimensional analysis and uh, stoichiometry and concentration values and acid-base neutralization and sort of combines together a lot of these cool ideas that we've been talking about um, into one uh, beautiful little package. So uh, let's talk a little bit about what I mean by titration. So titration involves what is called a burette that's usually kind of a fancy volumetric kind of a piece of either glassware or plasticware that has a little stopcock here that allows for the flow of the solution from the burette into whatever reaction vessel you have. I have a little Erlenmeyer flask here. And if you have sodium hydroxide in the burette with some sort of known concentration, and I have an HCl here in my flask with an unknown concentration, and it doesn't have to be that way. It could be the other way around. Uh, it's all about kind of figuring out a reaction. And within this HCl, there's some sort of indicator in there. And acid-base indicators are uh, solutions that will change color uh, when they react with specific pH values. So, um, for example, phenothaline is a good one that's used for strong acid, strong base um, neutralization reactions because it turns this nice light pink right at the neutralization point um, and is clear when you have an acid in there and totally magenta pink when you have a base. So you can really tell the difference between an acid and a base and right at that neutralization point you get kind of somewhere in between. So you take the solution, you add it to your unknown until it reaches that end point. So the indicator is indicating end point. And then you can read this. It's a graduated piece of equipment. So, you know, you take your initial volume, your final volume, figure out how much you use by taking the difference between the two. If you know the concentration and you have that volume, then you can figure out how many moles of sodium hydroxide that you used. And if you know the balanced chemical process that you were doing with this reaction, so in this case between sodium hydroxide and HCl, then you can determine the concentration of your HCl. So you can solve problems that look something like this. If it takes 35.5 milliliters of 1.54 molar sodium hydroxide to neutralize 5 milliliters of HCl, what is the concentration? Okay, so what this is saying is that the sodium hydroxide that is in my burette has a concentration of 1.45 molar. Uh, so that means there's 1.45 moles of sodium hydroxide per one liter of that solution. And if it takes 35.5 mils of that to neutralize 5 mils of HCl, then I need to figure out my concentration. So concentration here is molarity. And molarity is the number of moles of solute per liter solution. So I've already been told that I have 5 mils of HCl. So that 5 mils is my volume. And that's going to get me at this part here. So what I'm missing in determining this concentration is the number of moles of solute. So what I need to know is a relationship between sodium hydroxide and HCl so I can get that molar ratio. So if I'm reacting my sodium hydroxide with HCl, this is an acid-base neutralization reaction. The first product that always forms is water. The water comes from the hydrogen from the acid and the hydroxide from my base. The second product that always forms is a salt, in this case, literally table salt. The cation from my base and the anion from my acid form sodium chloride. It's already balanced this way, so we have a one-to-one -one ratio of these two. And this now gives me, this balanced chemical equation gives me a way to convert from moles of sodium hydroxide to moles of HCl, and that's really the part that I'm missing here. So if I take my 35.5 mils of NaOH, and I'm setting this up, I can go from milliliters to liters, and then liters to moles, and I'm doing this using my 
So this is just metric conversion, right? There's a thousand milliliters and one liter. And I'm trying to get to liters here because I'm given this molarity, my 1.45 moles. And that's the number of moles per one liter. So I can write it as a ratio like this, 1.45 moles of sodium hydroxide per one liter. And then I can go from moles of NaOH to moles of HCl using my balanced chemical equation. So it's a one to one ratio. Now I've converted to units of moles of HCl. So when I run the numbers here, I get 0.0515 moles of HCl or 5.15 times 10 to the negative two moles of HCl. And now I can take this and divide it by my 5.00 milliliters, but I want it in liters. So I'm gonna do that conversion in my head because I'm pretty snappy with that. Because I know how to move around within the metric system, right? So when I do this calculation, then I end up with a fairly concentrated solution of 10.3 molar HCl. So that says that for every one liter of solution that I have, I have 10.3 moles of hydrochloric acid, which is quite concentrated. Okay, so that's one way we can use titration to solve problems. The second way is I can figure out how much of each I would need or how many milliliters I would need of a specific solution to perform this type of titration experiment. So we can solve problems that look like this one. So this one says, how many milliliters of three molar NaOH would be required to neutralize 10 milliliters of six molar, this is H2SO4 sulfuric acid. So how many milliliters is what I'm looking for. So my unknown is a volume. So I can get to that because I'm given the concentration of the sodium hydroxide that's in my burette and the concentration of my sulfuric acid. So the first thing I need to do is figure out the relationship between sodium hydroxide and my H2SO4. And the only way to do this is by finding my balanced chemical equation. And because it's an acid-base neutralization reaction, it does this kind of metathesis or double displacement where we swap partners and the hydrogens from my acid and the hydroxides from my base always form water. So we have this kind of predictable pattern that we can get into. And then the second product that forms is the salt. So I have sodium as my cation, sulfate as my anion. Sodium is a plus one, sulfate is a minus two. So when I put them together, I'm going to need two of these guys for every one of these. And now I need to balance my overall expression. I have two sodiums over here, so I probably need two of these guys. Two hydroxides and two hydrogens mean that I need two waters. So now that I, I can see that I'm kind of given a thing one, uh, if we're thinking in Dr. Seussy terms, which I often am. So my thing one in these types of problems is going to be the thing that I'm given both volume and concentration information about. So that means H2SO4 is my thing one. Thing two is still the thing that's being asked the question about. I'm only given concentration data for that one. So that's going to be my thing two. Now, if we think about this in terms of stoichiometry, you're setting up a dimensional analysis problem for it, then it's going to be the same kind of idea of stoichiometry, but instead of using molar mass that comes from the periodic table, I'm going to use these kind of molar concentrations that are given to you in the problem. So let's start with thing one. I have 10 mils of H2SO4. In order to use this concentration, which says that I have six moles for every one liter, I need to get from milliliters to liters. So I'm gonna go 1000 milliliters in one liter, still for H2SO4, still for my thing one. Now I can use this concentration to go from liters of solution to moles of my solute, because that's what that concentration is. Now using my balanced chemical equation, I can go from moles of thing one to moles of thing two. That feels familiar from the stoichiometry setups that we've had before. So moles of thing one to moles of thing two. And you could think about this as one or two, A and B, kind of however you think about stoichiometry problems. So I have one of these for every two of these. And those come from those coefficients from that balanced equation. 
Now I know this concentration, so this concentration is going to get me from moles of that solute, in this case sodium hydroxide, to liters of solution. But it asks for a volume in milliliters, so I'm going to need to go back to milliliters. Now I've essentially gone from milliliters of my acid, I'm kind of converting it here using my molarity instead of my molar mass. I'm going moles to moles with my balanced chemical equation from the molar ratio that's set up within the equation itself. And then I can use the concentration to go back to volume. So in this case, instead of going grams to moles, moles to moles, moles to grams, like we've seen in other stoichiometry problems, we're going from volume to moles, moles to moles, moles to volume. And it's the same kind of setup. Okay, if you run these numbers and we're looking at significant figures, looks like we're going to be limited to three and we end up with 40.0 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. So again, what we solved for is the number of milliliters of sodium hydroxide that I would need to reach that end point if I started with 10 milliliters of 6 molar H2SO4. So I have that in my reaction flask. I add the sodium hydroxide, the 3 molar sodium hydroxide from my burette. I would require 40 milliliters of that sodium hydroxide to get this thing to its end point to become neutralized. And as always, if you have any questions on this, don't hesitate to reach out. Otherwise, I'll talk to you again soon.